Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's Sarah or Fro Criminal, whichever you prefer. And today we are going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive into Lolita history. So as you know, I'm a little bit of a Lolita history buff. And this is just something that really interests me and I've always been interested in. And I know a lot about it. And I'd like to share some information with you guys. So this is coming from my SAC anime panel. Uh, not just my SAC anime panel, but also my fanime panel. Just my Lolita fashion history panel uh, that I do host. Uh, which we are switching it up this year, so we are going to be hosting a different, uh, a different panel. It's not going to be the same one that I've hosted for the past two years. So, uh, stay tuned for that. We will have a recording of that. But for now, I wanted to do the old one because I want to save the new one for whenever we host it. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's get to it. So, a little bit about me. Um, I've been a Daily Lolita for two, almost three years now. Uh, I started in 2020, uh, whenever it, the sweet boom started happening, so that's whenever I came into the fashion. Um, I have modeled for Baby the Star Shine Bright, Hey Newly, Metamorphos. Um, what are some other ones? I think that's it. Oh, um, Enchanted Dreamwear Couture. I've modeled for a lot of brands. Um, I have about 20 main pieces, and my dream dress is Miracle Candy in Pink, the one piece, or this dress right here, which is Singing in the Rain, the one piece. I have a thing for one pieces. Do not judge me. A huge disclaimer! If you want to appropriate Lolita terminology for something that makes the fashion unsafe for anybody, especially minors, to research on their own, you have no place in our community. Lolita is for everyone. Unless you're making it unsafe for others, then it's everyone but you. And I cannot stress this enough. If you are misusing the tags, if you are posting porn underneath of the tags, if you are doing anything except post Lolita fashion underneath of the tags, or make the fashion unsafe for others, especially minors, um, you are not welcome here. Um, this video is not for you. I will be clowning on you. Um, this video is for people who want to get into the fashion, who are interested in the fashion, who just want to know a little bit more about the fashion. So let's get into it. Chapter 1, Where It Began. In the early 70s, Sanrio began experimenting with cute designs. Cutesy and childish handwriting became a popular trend in Japanese high schools at this time. Around the end of the 70s, Otome K was in full force in Japan. Otome K is similar to Lolita, just less detailed and intricate. After Otome K, DIY became very popular as well, creating Doll K, Lolita's predecessor. Due to the majority of Harajuku shopping district being closed to vehicles on Sundays, there was a huge increase in pedestrians. From this emerged Milk in 1970 and Pink House in 1973, and soon Angelic Pretty, my favorite brand, known as Just Pretty at the time, came as well. A new fashion was born from this mix of events, what we now know as Lolita. Term Lolita was recorded in the fashion magazine Ryoko Sunshin in September of 1987. Soon after came Baby the Star Shine Bright in 1988, Metamorphos in 1993, and other brands were founded as well. In this time period, the 90s, Lolita became more accepted thanks to Malice Miser, praise Manasama, a visual K band rising in popularity. Also at this same time, Japan was in an economic depression which led to even more growth in the newly founded J-fashion scene. Yaru, Otaku, Lolita, and Visual K inspired fashion such as Mori, Fairy, and Decora. Partly due to this economic difficulty, there was a huge growth in the amount of cuteness in youth cultures from the 70s, thanks to Sanrio again. Magazines also played a role in Lolita's growth. A few good examples being Fruits in 1998, a spin-off of the popular magazine Kira in 1998, and the Gothic Lolita Bible in 2001. Interest in countries outside of Japan was peaked when the Gothic and Lolita Bible and Fruits were translated into English and were distributed to other regions around the world. As it became more and more popular, more brands began branching out of Japan and into other spaces, such as Baby opening a France-based storefront in 2007 and New York in 2014 which has since closed down unfortunately, but we still do have the Baby the Star Shine Bright store here in San Francisco. Western fashion did influence Lolita a bit, specifically through Alice in Wonderland. Alice was the perfect icon of the shoujo image, meaning eternal beauty and innocence. Other major influences include Manasama from Malice Miser and Novela Takimoto, the author of the book Kamikaze Girls. 
Japanese government officials actually appointed Misako Aoki as the Lolita ambassador of Japan, hoping to spread it further, which of course we all know worked. Now in 2023, we have the internet allowing anyone from anywhere to access Lolita content. Chapter 2. Substyles Classic Lolita is a more mature style of Lolita that focuses on elegance rather than cuteness. It is much more historically inspired than the other substyles. Sweet Lolita, which I am wearing right now, is one of the most popular Lolita substyles, if not the most popular. This substyle is characterized by lighter, brighter colors and more whimsical motifs. Gothic Lolita is characterized by its darker aesthetic. The substyle is a fusion of Lolita fashion and the Japanese Gothic subculture of the 1990s. Country Lolita is a Lolita style inspired by the vast countryside and often Victorian farms. It is often a mix of Sweet Lolita and Classic Lolita. There are a lot of substyles. These are just the most prominent ones. Even though each substyle is different, there is one thing that ties them together. The silhouette! The poofy A-line or cupcake shape of the skirt is the link between arrow and country and so on and so forth. This brings us to chapter 3, the guidelines and being new. A lot of you might be familiar with this chapter already. Lolita has rules. I say rules loosely because the fashion will continue to change and evolve as time goes on. These are the guidelines I've found after doing some digging. Wear a skirt and or dress. Always wear a petticoat. Cover your shoulders and wrists. Skirt is knee length. Cover your ankles, legs with tights or socks. Wear a headpiece. Use high quality materials. A cord must be cohesive and balanced. And don't wear neon colors or really weird patterns. Looking at you, Rebecca Leopard, I am staring at you. Hardcore. Some of these things have been changed over the years, obviously. A lot of Lolitas won't strangle you for not wearing a blouse on a hot day or for wearing sneakers due to health problems and or comfort. I went to a pumpkin patch meet in Sacramento a while ago and I didn't wear Lolita-esque shoes because it was so dusty and my lower back was hurting me. What hasn't changed, though, is the general advice given to new Lolitas. If you are watching this because you are new or interested, don't be scared of the rules. To keep the fashion from morphing into something that doesn't really resemble Lolita anymore, let's break down these rules really quickly and see how they've changed. Wear a dress or skirt. Pretty self-explanatory, this hasn't changed almost at all since the skirt is what makes or breaks something being Lolita. Um, you can wear all brand things, blouse, head bowl, head bow, the full nine yards, but if you're wearing a skater skirt, then it's not Lolita. It's all about that shape. Always wear a petticoat. Same thing I just said. You want to make sure your petty fits properly under your skirt as well. Cover your shoulders and wrists. This one has changed a little bit. There's been a movement in the community regarding blouses. Um, specifically going blouseless. There are dresses like this, for example, Neon Stardiner, the jumper skirt, that it wouldn't be inappropriate to go blouseless. Um, even though it's considered a jumper skirt. Uh, so sometimes jumper skirts can be worn without blouses. They're very few and far between, but they do exist, um, and they look good whenever people pull them off really well. Cover your ankles and legs with tights or socks. I would say this one hasn't changed much at all. Uh, it's not about covering up as much as it is about balancing the cord out. So uh, what I do is I generally go for the head, the bust, the waist, and the legs. So what I mean by that is your head needs to balance out your waist and your bust needs to balance out your legs. Does that make sense? I'll put up like a little diagram here. Um, but what I'm saying is that it needs to balance it all out so that you don't just look like you have something massive around your waist and something tiny on your head. That's why head bows are usually so big. That's why we wear bonnets so often. Wearing a headpiece. So this one hasn't changed at all. Um, as I mentioned before, wearing a headpiece is very important to balance out the rest of the coordinate so that it doesn't look like you're wearing something absolutely humongous around your waist and something or nothing at all on your head. Use high quality materials. Uh, I would say this hasn't changed at all just because dresses are made out of costume fabric aren't going to hold up as well as a piece from Baby the Stars Shine Bright. This one is pretty self-explanatory. A cord must be cohesive and balanced. This hasn't changed much either, same as the one before, self-explanatory. Don't wear neon colors or really weird patterns. This, I have to say it again, I hated Rebecca Leopard when it came out. I did. I hated it. 
because who puts leopard print on a Lolita dress? I have never seen it pulled off well. Um, I just didn't like it. Did not like it. Ew! <laughs> on screen now is some popular brands. Uh, my personal favorites are Baby the Star Shine Bright and Angelic Pretty, as well as Alice and the Pirates. Scams. Lolita Show and Milanu. We need to talk about them. If you see something cute on Milanu and you see something cute on Lolita Show, do a reverse image search because I promise you what you're seeing is from another website. Milanu especially. Milanu is a very big scam website that is very well known in the Lolita community as being a scam website. And it not only has poor customer service, uh, they don't deliver some of their orders, and they just have really cheap replicas. So for the last segments of this video, I wanted to just do something really quick. Um, I wanted to show some replicas and what their original counterparts look like. So let's get started. So this is the original as shown on Milani's website. Give it a second so you can like imagine what the replica is going to look like. Can you picture this? Oh, this is a really cute dress. I wonder what the replica of this could look like. It can't be that bad. Someone wore this to Sack Anime in like 2011. Oh, this can't be that bad. It's just a coat. Very beautiful and comfortable. Uh, this is Candy Pop, I think. I don't remember. I don't remember the name of this release, but it's originally Angelic Pretty. Um, brace yourself. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Uh, here are some replicas. Uh, the right is a replica, the left is the original. Anyways, um, any questions or comments? If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them down below and I will probably make a second video just uh, doing the comments from this video. Um, just like specific questions because I know this was a very general overview of Lolita fashion and its history. That's what I intended it to be. And I know that it's not that in depth. If you have questions that go a little bit more like surface level, like underneath the surface, um, let me know and I will be happy to answer them. But anyways, uh, as usual, it's Sarah or Filth Criminal. I hope you have a good day, and yeah, see you guys in the next upload.